With dual cab utes becoming hotter than the local meat pie here in Australia, today I've gone ahead and found this 2021 Nissan Navara STX. And we're going to find out what all the fuss really is about. This should be fun. Now this Navara has been freshly updated for the 2021 model year, unlike this servo meat pie. What we get is a freshly redesigned front bar here. So headlights are new. They feature these really nice LED design. There's actually like four little lights in there. Really does look quite modern, well laid out. This particular one does have a upgraded bull bar as well. So you can spec these out in a few different trims. But I gotta say the new front end, you know, this big grill, it does look pretty good. I think the front of this U really does look pretty tough. Now coming down to the wheels, they do get a brand new redesigned rim here. Love it? Hate it? Let me know down in the comments below. A uh, lot of mixed opinions on these wheels. It's sporting some Mickey Thompson rubber, the R265. Looks pretty good, I think. Now at the back of the Navara, we do have redesigned taillights. Look pretty nice. They've done the tailgate also, so it says Navara in it. it looks pretty good back here also. You drop it down. <laughs> drop it down. <laughs> there is actually a little bit of a spring-loaded thing in here now, so it is a little bit easier to lift up this, and now it's not very heavy. Uh, Bed height has actually been raised up slightly also from the old Navara, so it's a little bit easier to get things in and out. That's nice, and uh, everything else, so it's pretty standard. Now inside the new Navara, it's pretty similar to the old one, but we do have a brand new steering wheel here. We do have an updated gauge cluster, so we have a digital screen in the middle now, and it really is quite useful. Now we do have an eight inch infotainment system here. It is a touch screen. I would say it's probably not the most eye appealing center console here, but it does do its job pretty well. And driving this for the last day or two, connecting it to my phone was very simple, and anytime I turn this vehicle off or on, it seems to do a really good job of connecting my phone straight away and letting the music just play without me having to touch anything, which I think that's pretty handy. Also gets Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you do have to plug it in. Now with the shifter controls down here, look, that is really where I wish Nissan had it done a little bit more of an update because it does kind of date this vehicle. You know, you got piano black down here and they could have just made that feel a little bit more modern, I feel like. This particular one has the cloth seats. Look, they look pretty nice. They're reasonably, you know, comfortable. Long trips, you know, you are probably gonna wanna get out and stretch after a little while, but you can upgrade to a leather trim, which can include heated seats also. So that could be a nice feature to upgrade to. We also have a 360 degree camera, which is actually really helpful for maneuvering this thing and trying to park it. It even comes in handy off-road, which I will show you guys later on. And look in the back seats, it's pretty standard for a dual cab ute and you do have enough room if you need to transport a couple of people back there. You do get an aircon vent, even a USB charger. So it's not too bad. All right, now starting the Navara, it is just a very basic key fob here. Push button start, away we go. Look, I've got to do a huge thank you to Maddington Nissan for actually giving me this Navara for the weekend. And look, they're a great bunch of guys down there. This is for sale, so if any of you guys are interested in buying one or checking out any of their range they have, I'm gonna leave a link for them in the description below. This ute though, I gotta say, I get why this thing is so hot. Not just this one in particular, but dual cab utes in general. I have recently reviewed the Raptor, the Ranger Raptor, and you know there is just so much to love because when you get a vehicle like this once they refine it a little bit you know you can really do everything in this you know you can go to work it can be a workhorse you can load up the back ute tray do whatever you like and then take this thing on the weekend off road with the boys and just run amok and have an absolute blast in four wheel high so you know, that's, that's the joy of these things. That's why everybody loves them. And planting your foot, that 2.3 liter twin turbo diesel 
does move you pretty well. 140 kilowatts, about 450 newton meters. It's pretty standard for the range. And if I'm being perfectly honest, you know, it does move pretty well. In particular, it does move better than that Raptor I did review. So that is something to say. Now, the other best thing about this engine is the fuel economy. It is freaking good, man. I am like blown away how this big of a vehicle, this ute, this dual cab, can put down numbers that this thing is putting down. It is seriously really impressive. This is claimed at 7.9 liters per 100 Ks, and I am getting 8.4. And I've got a heavy foot, guys, and I'm getting 8.4 liters per 100 Ks. That is just super impressive. Now look, if you're gonna compare this to some of its rivals, you'd think straight away of Toyota Hilux, Ford Ranger, Mitsubishi Triton, you got the Mazda BT50, even the Isuzu D-Max now. And look, a lot of those utes really are good. And uh, you know, the whole range, they're all very competitive. Um, but if I'm being dead honest, you know, look, out of some of the ones I've personally been in, I really think this is a hell of a lot better than the Toyota. The Toyota Hilux, I know I'm gonna get a lot of hate in the comments, but the Toyota Hilux needs to up its game because they don't even offer a reverse camera in their brand new 2021 Hilux. Come on, Toyota. They're still running the really crappy infotainment system. Look, I'm not trying to bash out Toyota. I'm just saying, if you guys want something that is a little bit nicer inside, don't get a Toyota, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> One of the big issues with me for this Ute, which I really think Nissan could have improved on, is just the armrest on the driver's side here. Look, it's, it's got a bit of padding, it's not a lot, and it's done in this cloth, but it is very hard, and your elbow really goes straight through it when you're resting your arm here and really does get kind of uncomfortable after a while. So that is kind of a real negative I wish they had improved on. The wheel just feels so much nicer in your hands over the old one. And with the gauge cluster having that little digital screen in the middle, it just makes it so much more convenient to just look down, see what speed you're doing, you see the temperature outside, the time, swap through different modes. You know, you've got your drive mode selector down here. If you go into standard, sport, or tow, there is actually an off-road mode also. And it is nice that they included those kind of a feature because you need that in a car like this. It needs to be able to do a whole bunch of different jobs. And that is the whole reason why everyone is picking up a dual cab because manufacturers are starting to listen. They're starting to make it more comfortable in here, more livable, more features, and including drive modes like this is just another handy one. Because Let's go ahead and touch on price with this car. Now this is the STX version, and this is gonna start at $58,000 roughly. And look, if you're gonna get a dual cab nowadays, even on the used market, I tell you guys, you're basically better off to buy new because the used market here right now is absolutely insane. And even if you wanna get the previous gen of this Navara, you're still gonna look at around that $45,000, $60,000 mark. And that's just ridiculous. And this goes with any ute. So basically every and any ute you purchase, it's gonna be about the same rules. So yeah, buy a new one, drive it for two years, you're pretty much gonna get your money back anyway. So yeah, I don't know what's going on with the ute market, but that just seems to be the going rate with utes in general. They just hold their value here in Australia really, really well. Now, just quickly, a huge shout out to this week's Patreon supporters. If you guys wanna join the Patreon, get early access to content, videos, merch, there is a link in the description, so check it out. There we go, we did a hundred. Zero to a hundred according to the draggy. 11.8 seconds. <laughs> and 
Look, yeah, I mean, it's definitely not going to be a rocket ship. Uh, 11.8 seconds, I guess. Now, off-roading in the Navara STX here, do get some pretty good controls here. So we do have rear locking differential. We got hill descent controls. We do have our four high and four low. And it's pretty capable. So look, we're at this nice little trail here. Just gonna put it in drive. We're in four high. Just go for a bit of a drive. And look, you know, this is kind of a, a tall, boxy vehicle, but for Australia and the amount of off-roading people do out here and the kind of off-roading they do, this kind of shape works because, you know, it does kind of look a little bit like a refrigerator at times, but you need it to be that way because the trails out here are quite narrow. And, you know, if you don't want to scratch up the whole paint job and all the side of your vehicle, you know, this thing actually will fit in most of the trails you're gonna take it on. So that's kind of a benefit here. And also if you tap the camera once more, it'll actually bring up your side to your left-hand side front tire, and it'll give you a view of what's right next to it. And that's good. Now I would have liked if it did it on the right side as well, but we can always put the window down and you know poke our head out. And I think that's the idea. But it is pretty good, you know, I did previously review the Ranger Raptor recently and I was unimpressed by it not having this kind of a camera setup. So big thumbs up here from Nissan. I, I do like that feature a lot. And you know, look, having those coils in the back, again, it, it makes for a pretty comfortable ride, even out on the trail here, you know, it, it's, it's not that bad, it really isn't. In the driving position, you know, you do get a pretty good view all around. It's a bit tough to see what's directly over the bonnet, but we have that camera, so it works out. And you know, look, this thing is just a lot of fun. And you know, look, just take it off road, make your own trail like we are here. And this thing will sort you out because these Navaras, they're tried and tested. They really are. So they're a capable you. They really, they, <laughs> look at this thing. It's having a blast out here, just running through the bush. You gotta love it. And again, this is just so much fun when you get one of these kind of capable vehicles and you can just plow your own trail. You know what I mean? Like this is, this is why somebody buys one of these vehicles because you wanna be able to use it as a daily, as a workhorse during the week. And on the weekend, go out camping, go out in the bush, have a bit of fun with your mates. And Australia, seriously, is the perfect place to do that. So, in conclusion, the 2021 Nissan Navara STX is a solid choice for a nice dual cab ute here in Australia. The exterior facelift really gives this ute a tough look. And with its more comfortable rear coil suspension and its king of the road driving position, the only real drawbacks with this Navara for me are with the lack of interior changes, leaving this cabin feeling slightly dated. But if you're after a good looking, good performing, seriously capable dual cab U, the 2021 Nissan Navara should definitely be on your list. Thanks for watching.